Glad to have you here in our second part of the lecture on compile time variability and clone and own. So we looked at how clone and own is one particular technique to uh, realize the vision of compile time variability in the last part of the lecture. And in this part of the lecture, we will talk about version control systems. Uh, I will give a brief recap on uh, version control systems as you are probably aware of them from undergraduate courses um, and how we can use version control for clone and own, uh, which results in a version of managed clone and own. So let's dive in. Uh, when we talk about software configuration management, uh, this sounds like, uh, if you haven't heard of this before, this uh, sounds like a weird term, especially if you have, if you think about software product lines, but we will see in a couple of minutes uh, with some examples, why is this called software configuration management? So the idea is, this is some kind of management for software. So that's why it's called software configuration management. And we will later on come why this is, uh, what this has to do with configurations. Overall, we have policies, processes, and tools for managing evolving software systems. So the idea is we have software systems that evolve over time. And uh, for those systems, we want uh, to support the development process. Um, uh, we want to uh, yeah, get sometimes back in time to certain revisions and so on. So we have. Uh, different sub areas in the area of software configuration management, including version control, system building, release management, change management, and collaborative work. So collaborative work, we want to support different developers collaborating on the same product, and they cannot use like logs or something like this uh, for their source code, because then they would need to wait every time a certain file of the source code is locked by someone else. Uh, we want to have change management, meaning that whenever we are planning changes, we want to manage those changes. We want to be able to um, abort changes that are uh, likely to um, have more harm for our software than they help. Uh, we might uh, understand this already uh, uh, in, during the process. Uh, we want to be able to prioritize certain changes. So we need some management around changes that we want to apply to the software. And there's also release management, meaning that we want to plan our releases. And while this uh, in the past has been something like every year, every two years, we have a release of the software. Uh, and maybe together with some uh, new hardware, this is more and more something that happens uh, in even shorter cycles, and we see that even single commits, single uh, changes are released to customers in, uh, yeah, in uh, services and service-oriented computing. We have these other two things, uh, version control and system building. And there's a connection to this lecture in this sense. Uh, that we will talk about version control in this part of the lecture and system building in the next part of the lecture. And from the first part of this lecture, we talked about clone and own in a way that which is also, which is also known as ad hoc clone and own or unmanaged clone and own. So what we will discuss in this part of the lecture and also in the next part are instances of managed clone and own and we want to use version control, uh, the concept of version control for clone and own in this part of the lecture. And in the third part of the lecture, we want to make use of build systems for clone and own. So let's dive into more details of software configuration management. And we will focus only on version control here and what are the basic terms that you should know uh, when, talk, when it comes to software configuration management for software variability. So there's some basic terms. We can have software items. An item, a software item is an artifact that can be uniquely identified. So the idea is that we have, can have some artifact. Uh, this can be a class in uh, a Java program. This can be a package in a Java program. This can also be uh, some uh, test case uh, or some test 
uh, class uh, with the purpose of testing only. Uh, but there can also be other artifacts that are not related to code at all, like documentation uh, and things like that, or a grammar. So these are software items. What is a version? A version is a modified software item. That means we have uh, a standard software item, and this has been modified. And there are two typical reasons for such new versions. One is that of a revision, a new version that replaces an old one. So the idea of a revision is we had uh, a bug in the program. We are changing the program, and then we have a new revision. And this can be, uh, in, in many cases, uh, broken down into modifying some software items from an old version to a new one. And no one wants to go back and have the bug again. right? So this is a new revision. But sometimes we are looking at other kinds of versions. And these are variants. A variant is a version that is supposed to coexist with another one. So for instance, if you think of an operating system, uh, someone, I think, like 30 years ago, maybe uh, 20 years ago, uh, like for, uh, for more people, uh, we started to introduce a new architecture, uh, like 64-bit architecture. And why was it needed? Because the random access memory could not be accessed anymore. There was a limit, a natural limit, uh, depending on the operating system at 3 or 4 gigabyte. So to access more uh, random access memory, we had to build new architectures uh, of uh, hardware that have a larger, uh, 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 that have more bits to address uh, bytes in the memory. So for some time, we had these as variants because for many operating systems, they supported 32-bit and 64-bit architectures simultaneously even though in the last couple of years, many of them uh, actually stopped uh, supporting 32-bit. Uh, when it was introduced, it was not yet clear whether 32-bit will be something that is soon, uh, sooner or less replaced by 64-bit. And there are still a couple of operating systems still supporting this. So this is an example of a variant, because we wanted to have both to coexist. So when we look at this uh, picture over here, uh, we can have some items. So every line represents an item over here. Yeah? So every of those lines. And for these items, we have certain versions of those items. We have revisions, which means these are versions that are supposed to replace uh, uh, each other. And we have variants, which are uh, different uh, uh, variants that are uh, supposed to coexist in parallel. So this is actually um, roughly uh, these two are actually the same uh, items, but one is a variant of the other one. So what we can see from the next uh, animation, from the next picture, is that we actually have more. We have more terms that we talk about. And one of them is configuration. So a configuration is a set of software items that together form a functioning partial system or a functional system. So in a graph library, you could uh, say that the graph library itself is a library. So it's probably. Uh, later on used as in a larger system, in a larger software. Uh, but still, a configuration of that, um, um, of that software, of that library, is a configuration. So this means we have a certain item. We uh, might have a certain class over here. We have another class over here. And having those two classes together, is a certain configuration. And then we might have another configuration that is, again, supposed to work. And this might be the following. But it could be that something else is not a configuration. So for instance, this. It could be that we are making a change to both artifacts 
such that they work together, but they will not work together when we only update one of the artifacts, in, in this case, the second artifact, uh, but not update the first artifact. So what is the baseline? The baseline is a stable configuration that represents a point of reference for further development. So the idea is that we have certain configurations that are more important uh, than others to us. And a certain configuration is called baseline if it's uh, the, uh, the fundamental, uh, fundamental configuration of the system, uh, which we are uh, aiming to extend or improve in the future, for instance. And then we have releases, which are baseline delivered to customers. So baselines that are released. So it could be that we are uh, producing a medical device and we are having developments for a new release. And at some point in time, we say, this is a baseline that we will test for the next two weeks. We have extensive testing, the whole team will test the system document all the problems and in those two uh, then the weeks afterwards we want to um, again arrive at a higher quality uh, by removing some of the bugs so this is then a baseline but it was not released to a customer and that's why we have different kinds of configurations some are so important that they are baselines for us and some are releases for us you could think of th something else like alpha beta releases uh, which are more uh, examples of different uh, uh, yeah, importance of certain baselines. So how to use all that for our graph library? So if, uh, again, we had different classes. We had a class for graphs and a class for edge. And a graph configuration is actually this one over here. So taking these two uh, revisions of the graph and the edge together build up a configuration that is a complete product that we can use and compile. Now comes the question, what is a weighted graph configuration, which is the one over here? In this sense, we have, have again the graph and we have the weighted edge and we have another class, a new class weight. Now, if we introduce this new feature weight, uh, we add a new class. So we have a new software item here uh, and we have the weighted edge and the question, is this a weighted graph configuration? And it's probably not because it's not that easy because maybe we need a new release over here, uh, a new revision, I'm sorry. Uh, for the graph because the graph needs to actually assess the weighted edge. And this is again a question how this is implemented. Uh, we looked at uh, certain design patterns where this might not be needed to change the graph. So when we talk about version control systems, uh, about version control, this is typically tool supported. This is a tool supported process in terms of version control systems. So version control is a more general concept of um, uh, creating different kinds of versions of the system and manage those versions being uh, revisions, but also variants. Uh, we want to uh, take care, uh, we want to, um, uh, profit from those version control systems, also from for the graph library. To understand how this works, uh, we have a simple example over here. For instance, in this example, we have a main development branch, and then we have some additional branches uh, for features. So we might have a branch over here where we decide to develop some of the features, and once it is done, we merge it back into uh, a certain revision. But there might also be some feature branches, and that's uh, why we use a feature branch where we discontinue the development, where we say, OK, this branch is no longer needed. We will even remove the branch at some point in time and not merge it. But there are also branches that are supposed to coexist somehow in parallel. And that's when it comes to something that is very similar to what we uh, have seen in the previous part of the lecture as clone and own. 
So there are different operations that we can have here. For instance, we can have the merge if we decide that this branch will be uh, continued and it will be merged uh, back again into our main development. Uh, and we might have also something which is known as cherry pick. So if a certain change that has been done on another branch is included into uh, in uh, uh, for the uh, uh, in the main line, but could also be just any other branch. So again, what is a cherry pick? A cherry pick is the following. So we take the difference between these two versions, which is called delta. So this is a delta of one revision uh, compared to another revision. And we apply this to another revision, the revision 11. So, and this application is called applying the patch. And overall, what this means is that we take some changes, could be several commits, but in, in uh, most cases, we would just look at single commits, single changes, and we want to uh, understand where they are um, uh, and how they can be applied to a different branch. In contrast, what is more commonly used uh, during development is a merge. And whenever we talk about merge here, we are actually meaning a three-way merge. What does a three-way merge mean? A three-way merge means that we take an original uh, revision, that's revision uh, four in this example, and we take all the changes that have been applied on the branch, and we take all the changes that have been applied on uh, another branch, and then we merge them together, and the resulting change will be um, will include all the changes that have been made on both branches. So in this uh, example, this is a very a simple version of a three-way merge because it's just a fast forward. Uh, but we could also imagine that there are further changes that have been applied here in the meantime. So again, there's a fundamental difference between a cherry pick and a merge. A merge will always require that these diverge somehow and we know when they diverge and we want to unify all the changes that have happened uh, in between since revision four. And a cherry pick means that we want to apply just a single patch, a single change uh, to another branch. So how to use um, version control uh, for our graph library? Remember, again, we had a default implementation with weights, as uh, discussed in the first part of the lecture. Uh, then we had Alice branch, uh, where Alice uh, was um, uh, considering graphs without weights. And we had a Bob's variant, which had colored nodes uh, in contrast to Alice branch. So how can version control already help for this set uh, setup? So when, when we come back uh, to our example here with these uh, two Lego figures, we can see that something changed in the meantime. So we have another variant over there that you can see. And the question is, where does this variant come from? So in the ad hoc clone and own, we will not use any tools. So it could be that the source code is distributed via uh, file server, uh, file sharing server. It could be that we send around zip files via email. And if you think who would ever send source code as zip files via email, uh, in one of the first master thesis that I uh, supervised, this was actually the common practice in the company to send around source code in zip files via email. But obviously, not everyone is getting these emails, so it's always hard to find the most recent version. You will not find all the versions. And we want to find all the versions, but we also want to understand how they are different from each other and what emerged from which variant. So to uh, speak graphically, we might have had uh, this variant in the beginning, and then we've had a change, and then we've had another change. 
uh, and we can recognize from the version control which of the versions has been produced from which other, uh, which changes have been applied since then. And this is what version control can give to us. So the question is, how does Eve work? Uh, how does Eve fit into this picture? And a bit more, it's a bit more complicated because Eve wants to have weights and wants to have colored nodes. So, and the question is, does a merge work for her? And the answer is no, a merge does not work. If I would take, a merge is not even applicable in this case because it's just a fa fast forward. If I would try to merge these two products, it would actually result in a product that looks like this. Why? Because a merge simply takes all the changes that happened since we were branching and considers all the changes. So it will also take the changes into consideration that happened here when Alice created the new branch and removed the weighted edges. So what Alice needs is kind of a combination of this variant together with this change. And this would be something that is supported uh, with cherry pick, but of course in practice we not only have two or three existing variants and we not only have one or two commits. And then something else might happen. Uh, we have some refactorings going on in the main development in the meantime. And for these refactorings, uh, it's a question again, how does Eve arrive at those refactorings? How can they be applied to their product? So some observations on using version control for clone and own. First of all, it's a kind of managed clone and own. And opposed to ad hoc clone and own as we discussed in the first part of the lecture. So when we use version control, we have some tracing. We understand which version has been uh, uh, forked by which other variant and which one has been uh, merged at some point in time in another variant. So this means we have, we can, or version control and allows us to keeping track of revisions of variants uh, of different versions and provide some provenance. So we can later on understand which parts of the code have been copied in which of the uh, different uh, branches. So whenever we apply and create a new branch, we're actually copying the whole uh, product that we are developing. So the creation of new variants is partially supported by merging of variants, but we already see that this will not always work. So for uh, Eve's case, this will not work because the merge will actually um, yeah, uh, still uh, have no weights in there. And propagating of changes between variants is somehow supported by cherry picking the changes, but this is a, a largely manual process. So there's a lot of uh, work uh, that needs to be done if you think that large systems uh, may exist in 10 different uh, versions, uh, variants, I'm sorry. And if we look at these 10 different variants, they might have 100 commits a week and you might need half of them, but you don't know which half of them and you don't know, you don't want to actually uh, apply cherry picking in all those cases. However, so the versioning is typically limited to entire systems. So we have the complete branch and it's, it would need, uh, I mean, of course we can have different projects, uh, different parts of the project uh, with different version control, but in general a branch just supports uh, creating a complete copy of the system. And this was actually different in the first time uh, for the first version control systems. So systems like CVS and earlier systems, uh, they even supported versioning of single files, but there was another problem, how to identify a certain configuration. And that's why the whole uh, theory of uh, version control even emerged. And we have no flexible combination of software items. Uh, so it's not that easy to say, I want to have the weighted edges from this branch and I want to have something else from the other branch. 
So what are advantages of clone and own with version control systems? We have well-established and stable systems. Version control is used for software development anyway. Um, there's almost no software development that is uh, applied without version control. So version control is state of the art. It is known. It is used. So we can use the same tools, the same methodology now also for our clones. It's a well-known process. So people not only know how to use Git uh, and SVN in the old days, uh, but it is a well-known process behind this and there's good tool integration. So every IDE has support for Git. There are also a couple of disadvantages. Uh, we have the development of variants and not features. So basically we copy complete variants. Uh, we, have, we cannot copy and, and select features. We have no flexible combination of features um, that is directly possible. Um, and we have no structured reuse, it's just copy and edit still uh, as with clone and own. And merging and cherry picking are not fully automated, right? I cannot simply say I want to have the variant um, except for those changes that Alice made, for instance. Okay, so we've seen merging and cherry picking somehow supports uh, clone and own, but not completely. Now, the question is, uh, when we have so many drawbacks of uh, clone and own, uh, shall we use no version control at all? And here's a, a quote that I would like you to read. And the quote basically tells us, okay, there's not only version control, but there's also something like revision control. So we can use version control systems for both revisions and variants. But if we have only a few customers and a few variations in the system, then we might be uh, using uh, version control for variant control. But for revision control, um, we, we always want to use uh, revision control uh, on the systems and uh, this uh, kind of distinguishes that version control has two parts that uh, what it is used for. It's used for revisions, it's used for variants, uh, and for variants it can only be used or should only be used if we only have a few variants. So in the second part of the lecture, we will talk about software configuration management as a traditional discipline in software engineering for managing the evolution of variability intensive systems. Version control systems are a widespread tool um, uh, to support clone and own in practice. And this is again, not that some researcher thought about clone and own and how to improve this, but people in practice actually applied version control. They used version control. Version control was there initially for other ideas, for feature branches, for release management, for change management, but then it has been also applied in clone and own settings. There's some further readings and again some practical exercises for you to uh, uh, get into more uh, details with the topic, which software configuration managements are supported uh, by version control systems. So which uh, have you uh, yeah, experienced? Do you know other version control systems than Git? Uh, most of you are probably uh, familiar with Git. And if so, in which way are they different from Git? So I already talked about some differences uh, in CVS, but there are other differences in SVN and other version control. Thank you for being here and hope to see you again in the next video.